birding involves being in nature for long periods of time, which contributes to better mental health. According to a paper called Doses of Neighborhood Nature, published in 2017 in the journal Bioscience, the more birds the respondents saw, the less they were depressed and anxious. Continue watching to find out more. Honored viewers, I am Andre. If you ever visit Luxembourg, the smiling people would cheerfully say Moyen, which means hello in Luxembourgish. The gregarious Luxembourgers wish you a prosperous life founded on noble ideals. Welcome to our program, Birding, Connecting Us with Nature, part one of two. Have you ever had the wonderful experience of being woken up by beautiful bird songs and felt like going out to your backyard to find out what the sweet angels look like? If so, congratulations. You are just one step away from entering the fascinating world of birding. Also known as bird watching, it is defined as the hobby of studying birds in the wild. It is one of the fastest growing hobbies in North America. The Canadian Nature Survey found Canadians spend more time birding than gardening. And in 2016, over 45 million Americans enjoyed observing wild birds, according to a US government survey. Books documenting wild birds can be traced back to the late 18th century. However, it was still considered strictly a pastime for ornithologists and some very enthusiastic bird lovers until Roger Torrey Peterson of the United States published the first modern field manual called The Field Guide to the Birds in 1934. This book, which features clear diagrams and illustrations for each bird species, enabled readers to easily identify our winged friends. It inspired many people to become interested in birding. The National Audubon Society is an American bird conservation nonprofit with roots in an organization formed in 1896. During the 20th century and until this day, it has been instrumental in supporting bird protection efforts, publishing birding knowledge and information and helping the birding community to grow. In the 1960s, flights became affordable for ordinary people, making traveling long distances to watch birds more feasible. This further encouraged birding enthusiasts. Starting in 1969, the American Birding Association ran big year events, which are informal challenges among birders to identify as many bird species as possible in a calendar year within a specified region. The 2011 fictional movie The Big Year is an adaptation of a 2004 book of the same name by Mark Obmasik that relates the true story of the three challengers vying for the 1998 title of the best birder in the world. The film vividly portrays the intense competition involved and shows the participants' gamesmanship, endurance, stamina and determination. The World Big Year Record is held by Dutch birder Arjan Dwarshaas. In 2016, he observed an incredible 6,852 bird species in 40 different countries. Birding is gaining in popularity for very good reasons. It has many solid benefits for the body, mind and spirit. Getting to and from your birding spot usually includes hiking, which is great cardiovascular exercise. And while doing so, you are breathing in fresh air and soaking up the sun and producing natural vitamin D. 
Birding also enhances mental alertness and makes one physically engaged, as it takes quick eyes and arm coordination to scan and track our fast-moving feathered friends using binoculars. Birding involves being in nature for long periods of time, which contributes to better mental health. According to a paper called Doses of Neighborhood Nature, published in 2017 in the journal Bioscience, the more birds the respondents saw, the less they were depressed and anxious. Moreover, friendships come naturally in birding, as the activity is usually done in groups. More pairs of eyes and ears working in collaboration improve the chance of sighting birds. Even when you are birding alone, most birders can easily tell whether you are also a bird watcher by your binoculars and perhaps your outfit. You can find pleasure in inviting new friends to bird with you and share birding information and tips. In addition, birding gives you spiritual benefits. Enthusiastic bird watchers are often conservationists, as birding makes you appreciate nature and want to protect birds' habitats and the environment. Hence, your compassion grows. Moreover, birding requires focus and being quiet, similar to meditation. And when you finally see the birds after a long wait, their sheer beauty will catch your heart immediately, and you will concentrate on what's happening at that moment. The head bobbing, the tail flicking, the colorful plumage, their curious hops, and heavenly song, as if nothing else exists. Through this meditative birding process, you are connected with the bird and nature. Your consciousness is transformed from bird watching to contemplation, so it develops a Zen peace of mind. For maximum birding enjoyment, here are the essentials to prepare before your outing. The first requirement is a good field guide. For a novice, each bird you encounter is a mystery, and playing detective to solve the case is a core part of birding fun. A field guide describes the unique features of each bird species, the color, size, shape, behavior and song, as well as the differences between males and females, adults and juveniles. Thanks to modern technology, there are many field guide apps to aid in your detective work, and some of them are free. In addition to comprehensive diagrams, illustrations and photos of each bird species, they have several major advantages over their conventional paperback counterparts. If you can snap a photo of a bird you do not recognize and upload it, the app can compare the image to those in its database and tell you its species. Some are capable of playing songs and calls for different bird types. Each bird species has distinct repertoires, and some birds are named after their call. A chickadee's alert call is chicka dee dee dee. Even if you can't see the bird right away, the app may recognize the winged friend by his or her calls. And there's one more advantage. You have less weight to carry during your trip. The Audubon Bird Guide, covering North American species, and Merlin Bird ID, covering species worldwide, are two popular free field guide apps for beginners. Next, a binocular is the primary piece of birding equipment. It gives you magnified vision to identify the field marks of birds more clearly. However, it is quite challenging to select the birding binocular which suits you best. A binocular with 8 times to 10 times magnification is good for birding, but you have to balance that with other factors such as field of view, image quality, how it feels in your hands, eye comfort, weight and budget. Each birder has unique requirements, so don't buy a binocular model just because your friend has it. Besides, although binoculars that yield a better image quality are tempting, they are typically more expensive and heavier, so it can be better to skip the ones that are too heavy in your hands or when hung around your neck. Therefore, touch, feel and test as many models as possible before buying. 
Birding festivals bring together lots of birders to see migratory birds at prime times and locations. And binocular manufacturer representatives often attend too. So these can be excellent opportunities to try out a variety of binocular models before making your purchase. If you cannot or don't feel like traveling that far, you can simply try birding in your backyard. You may be surprised by how many bird species visit your garden. With a field guide and a binocular, you are set to go. Here are some tips for backyard birders. First, timing. As backyard birds are most active during their foraging times in the early morning and late afternoon, these are the best times to observe them. Second, make your garden more attractive to birds. Just one bird feeder can lure many species of birds and multiple feeders with different types of food Seeds, fruits, berries and nectar for hummingbirds or sunbirds work miracles. Bird baths are quite effective as well. You can see wonderful bird actions there. They like to play with water. How they drink, bathe, dry themselves and preen is joyful to watch. Arranging your garden with some native bird-friendly plants will also increase your backyard's popularity with resident birds as well as migrants. Your garden will serve as a convenience store for them to recharge on their long journey and compensate for their habitat loss. And if your mini bird paradise charms a rare vagrant, a bird that wanders out of its natural range due to bad weather, got off track while migrating, or is an inexperienced juvenile, you will be able to add one precious tick to your list of bird species which you have seen. Welcome to our program Birding – Connecting us with nature, part 2 of 2. In the previous episode, we introduced the benefits of birding, also called birdwatching, and provided tips on birding around your house. In today's show, we will talk about how to get ready for birding away from home, as well as birding ethics and etiquette. Birding in the field is exciting, as it satisfies our explorative nature. To have a successful birding trip, it's best to plan well. The first step is to pick the birds you'd like to see and find out where their habitats are. Local parks, ponds and hiking trails are all nice birdie places you can consider for a short outing. To look for uncommon or rare species, Visiting national parks or wildlife preserves is often rewarding. Such sites typically contain mixed habitats, such as fields, woods, ponds and streams, so you can see more bird varieties. You can also use the eBird app to help choose your birding destinations, as it offers excellent species maps and a hotspot exploration function. If seeing many migratory birds is what you crave, you should visit one of the migration hotspots, such as High Island, Texas, USA. From early March to mid-May, thousands of birds migrate north. After a long 1,000-kilometer, 18-hour flight across the Gulf of Mexico, High Island is the first location which tired migrants land at. It provides them with the food and cover they need during their long journey. When inclement weather brings headwinds, even more exhausted birds need to rest in this area. This bird fallout phenomenon attracts thousands of birder pilgrims from all over the world to High Island annually. Would you like to join them? Be sure to book your plane ticket in advance and arrive early to secure your parking space. When choosing the birding location, you also need to take season and weather into consideration. The best birding seasons are spring through fall, 
a period when most birds breed. In the breeding season, you can see male birds with brilliant breeding plumage and hear their beautiful love songs, observe courting and nesting behaviors and spot the chicks. Check the local weather forecast for your scheduled date and pack suitable clothes. As for the birding outfit, non-restrictive garments made of lightweight materials are ideal and dressing in layers allows one to adjust for varying temperatures throughout the day in the field. Clothing in camouflaged colors is recommended as it will help you blend into the bird habitat you are exploring. You should also wear waterproof and slip-proof shoes with good ankle support. You may want to carry a field bag to hold your necessary gear. A proper field bag should not be too small and allows easy access to the must-haves. Binocular, field guide, trail map, water bottle, snacks, mobile phone and protective products such as sunscreen and insect repellent. It should have some zip pockets to secure valuable items like your wallet and ID. The material should be water resistant and make as little rustling noise when opened or moved as possible to avoid disturbing the birds. If you bring a camera along to create a personal visual bird list or assist in identification, a field bag with a cushioned rear panel or a separate camera bag is also recommended. The last thing to plan before your exploration begins is logistics. Using public transportation is a brilliant idea as you can save fuel and parking costs and it reduces your carbon footprint. There are plenty of comprehensive, user-friendly online guides to birding using public transportation, such as New York City Audubon's Birding by Subway Map. You can also use apps like CityMapper to see public transportation options to your destination in major cities around the world. Just remember to include some cushion time for possible route delays during your wallet-friendly birding trip. We are very lucky to have so many beautiful birds around us. While we are enjoying this wonderful feeling of being connected with nature, it's our responsibility to protect the welfare of our feathered friends and their habitats. Here are some of the birding ethics we should practice. First, reduce disturbances. It is safer to keep all disturbances to a minimum, as some bird species, especially the rare and endangered ones, have a low tolerance for loud sounds. Noise, direct light, laser pointers and flash photography can agitate birds. Please remember to turn your mobile phone off or keep it on silent mode. Chasing birds is harmful, especially to the exhausted migrants that just traveled hundreds of kilometers and need a good rest. Feeding should be avoided, as getting food from humans is disruptive to their foraging instinct and our food is unhealthy for them. Playback is the practice of playing a bird species song with a digital device to attract them into one's view. Although playback is a powerful tool, please use it ethically. Keep the volume low and just play short snippets of a song, then stop and wait for a response, as the overuse of playbacks could have negative impacts on birds and obstruct improvements in your birding skills. Second, respect their space. Don't invade a bird's territory when he or she shows signs of agitation, such as making alarm calls or fleeing. Please be very mindful of birds sitting in their nest. When the bird family is stressed, the eggs or chicks may fall out and parents may even abandon the nest. On the other hand, desperate bird parents may attack intruders to protect their young. So please restrain your excitement and watch them from a safe distance and do not disclose the nesting location to others. Third, please don't litter. Our trash hurts the birds in many ways, directly and indirectly causing injuries, impeding their digestive system, poisoning them and making spaces uninhabitable. A quote from Chief Seattle, the famed 19th century Native American leader. Take only memories, leave only footprints, is the perfect approach to birding. Bring back any rubbish you have accumulated in the field 
and give the birds a hand by collecting any waste you find along the way. If you only remember one thing, above all else, please always make the birds' welfare your top priority. Similarly, when you are birding with others, it is important to follow birding etiquette so everyone can enjoy a rewarding connection with nature. Here are some guidelines. First, keep others' view clear. When you are looking for a suitable position to see a shy bird, please make sure you don't move in front of someone else and block their line of sight. Be patient and wait for your turn and do others the courtesy of sharing your good spot. If a birding guide has set up a spotting scope for the group to have a clear view, you should step aside once you have seen the bird, so others can see it too. Remember, spoiling someone's lifer, the first encounter of a bird species, is considered not nice in the birding world. Second, no trespassing. When trying to locate birds, please mind the boundaries between public and private lands. Always ask for permission to enter someone's property, as trespassing gives all birders a bad name. Third, be polite. Respect the interest, rights and skill levels of your fellow birders. If someone disturbed the birds or you, assume it's unintentional due to a lack of experience. When a beginning birder needs a helping hand, take the opportunity to assist and you'll both be happy. Be courteous to non-birders as well. Always thank those who have stopped to let you observe birds. Don't block the trail and leave room for others to enjoy the activities in the same outdoor space. To sum up, birding is a great hobby for everyone. By connecting with nature and our cheerful feathered friends, you'll receive many physical and psychological benefits and the learning and surprise elements can add a lot of fun and thrills to your life. In addition, the experiences make us more loving, polite and respectful to birds, nature and other individuals, which makes for happier people. That's why birders say, once a birder, always a birder. Nature will win you over, one bird at a time. Thank you, brilliant viewers, for your company today on our program. Up next is Four Beings Who Take Care of the World, part 3 of 5, on Between Master and Disciples, right after noteworthy news. May you and your loved ones feel recharged by nature's healing energy. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash hl. Nos programmes offrent plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com baroblique schedule et suprememastertv.com baroblique hl. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule et suprememastertv.com barra inclinada hl. Τα προγράμματα μας προσφέρονται σε πολλές γλώσσες. Παρακαλούμε δείτε suprememastertv.com κάθετος schedule και suprememastertv.com κάθετος HL.